What's up guys, it's Brad from Light Architect here. In this video, I'm going to show you a quick and easy technique that you can use to animate your bug and bird void particle systems inside of Blender 3D to add some life to your 3D scene or live action shot. As you probably know, if you follow this channel, we just released our Spiderfy 2.0 add-on for Blender update, and we have lots of new bird void particle systems for doing this. And in the process of creating that trailer that we just released for Spiderfy, I utilized a lot of these techniques to get those results fairly quickly. And of course, you can also use these techniques when you're adding your own void particle systems as well. However, you will have to adjust and set up your void system a little bit more specifically. So I will be using the Spiderfy add-on for the sake of this demonstration. So uh, anyways, guys, let's get started. Started. here we are inside of blender let's go ahead and just delete everything in our scene here and for the sake of this tutorial I'm going to use a background image from one of our nature shots so uh, I'll just go here and add a camera first for our main render and I'll just kind of place it off to the side here we'll open up a new window here go to viewpoint camera so we can see camera view on the right side here and what we want to do is we just want to create a nice uh, little angle here just uh, very simple and now I'll just go to the uh, object data properties while our camera is selected. I'll check the background images checkbox, open it up here, add image, and then I'll just go to open. And uh, you can use a video clip or just a background image. Since this particular shot that I'm going to use is uh, a video but locked on a tripod, a screenshot from that video should work pretty well. So I'll go ahead and find that nature screenshot here. And it's just this one right here. So I'll go ahead and open that. And now as you can see here, I just have a nice preview of that nature video that we can use as a reference for animating our bird void particle system. And this is a nice setup here. Now what I'm going to do is navigate to our Spiderfy tab here at the bottom. And as I mentioned, we're going to be using the sparrows uh, for this specific shot for the sake of this example. So I'll go ahead and select that. But uh, feel free to use any of the uh, fly options here. You can add butterflies, flies, hummingbirds, crows, seagulls, etc. And of course, you can also do this same technique with some of the crawl void systems as well. But I find this technique works a little bit better with the fly systems. And uh, we'll go ahead and name our void system. We'll call it sparrows flock and we'll change the bugs amount to maybe like 75 something smaller and then we want to make sure that we add a goal this is a key to animating your system and then we'll just click on add bug system and now as you can see here a void system is going to enter the middle of our scene here and it's going to have a goal object attached to it so uh, this is right out of the box our sparrows just kind of flying around and wherever we move their goal object is where they're going to fly toward so as you can see here, I can animate it and move it around and they'll just keep flying wherever we want them to. So uh, you can probably see where this is going. What we can do is uh, kind of uh, select our goal as well as our sparrow particle system here. And we can find a nice place for them in our shot for camera view. So I'll put them out here. I'll put the uh, sparrow emitter kind of over here somewhere off to the right of frame like we did in our trailer. And let's see what we're getting so far. Yeah, not bad, just a very uh, simple setup here. I might uh, change the focal length of our camera to maybe, uh, we'll try something like 35 and maybe pull it back a little bit so it's a little bit wider. I'll scale up our emitter as well for the sparrows and just place it off to the right of our scene. Maybe scale it back down a little bit. All right, so right off the bat, this is looking pretty cool, but I am noticing that for this specific shot, these sparrows are staying quite far away from one another. So what I'm going to do is while our sparrow system is selected, I'm going to go to the particle system tab here and I'll go under physics, under the uh, movement options here, I'll change the air personal space to maybe 0.3. And then I'll also, just for the sake of this tutorial, I'll uh, decrease the maximum airspeed to maybe 30. And now we'll try it out again. Now, as you can see here, they're much closer together, um, even too close together, I would say. So maybe I'll try something like 0.5. And this should be a pretty nice setup for us. One thing I might also do is uh, select our uh, sparrow particle system here and I'll change the end frame for the emission of our sparrows to maybe uh, frame 50. So we have approximately two seconds of emission of our 75 sparrow particles. And then I'll change the number of sparrows to maybe 45 since uh, it's just gonna be kind of a burst of sparrows. And that's looking a little bit better. Now we can control them a lot easier. Maybe increase this number to 55. 
And now that we've set up the general parameters for our Sparrow Boyd system, now what we're going to do is actually animate their goal to change the way they interact in the scene over the course of our timeline. And in the past, what I've done to do this is I've just kind of, uh, you know, tediously, um, you know, inserted keyframes here as the uh, simulation goes on for our goal object, you know, frame by frame going through different parts and kind of changing where I want the sparrows to go. And then what I would do is I would select our sparrow simulation, go to the particle tab cache, and then bake that. And then as you can see, our uh, goal for the sparrows is going to kind of move around and they're going to follow it as they should. However, this uh, requires a lot more experimentation than the way I'm about to show you. Instead, what we can do and what I've done over the past week when I was creating our trailer is I've actually used the auto king function here at the bottom for our Boyd system goal and uh, animated it over the course of our timeline that way. So to show you this technique, I'll just go ahead and delete all of our keyframes for our bug system goal really quick. Go ahead and delete those. Then I'll select our Sparrow Particle System. Make sure the bake is deleted so we can start from scratch. And then what we can do is we can select our Bug System Goal here. Make sure we're at the beginning of our timeline here. And then select the Auto Keying function. And then I'll press Spacebar to start playing through our scene. And then I'll animate our uh, Bug System Goal here to create kind of a cool animation and that's not going to bake your Boyd simulation however you will see it playing back in real time and then you can bake it later based on what you're seeing in the viewport and it will give you pretty much that exact same result so as you can see here if I select our bug system goal now you'll see that there are a ton of keyframes throughout the course of our timeline for wherever I moved our uh, bug system goal and now when we select our Sparrow Boyd particle system and we go to bake our sparrows will follow our bug system goal depending on how we animated it. And this is a really nice way that you can add these flocking simulations to your scene. As you can see, pretty much exactly what you're going to get as you're animating your goal object over the course of the simulation. Um, one thing I should mention is that you should make sure to turn auto keying off once you're finished because if you don't, then pretty much anything you move, if you move the camera just to adjust your scene or your frame or whatever, that's also going to add keyframes for whatever object you have selected. So just make sure that once you're done with your auto key function, uh, that you turn it off and uh, then of course, bake your Boyd simulation and uh, you should get some pretty awesome results. But uh, anyways, guys, that's it for this video. I hope it was helpful. If you have any questions or suggestions, feel free to leave a comment in the comment section below. Let me know what kind of videos or tutorials you'd like to see next. And I'll see you next time.